how do you store and manage all of your passwords? We're gonna be talking about that today. Hopefully you learned something new and uh, really show you how I like to manage and store all of my passwords. So my name is Emilio and today we're talking about the passwords. How do you manage all of your passwords? How do you store all of your passwords? You've got heaps of passwords. Over the years you've got you know, a whole heap of websites that you visit, banking stuff, your social media, personal pin numbers, all these sort of things. And you may have them stored somewhere on paper, on notepad, which I've seen people do that. Crazy to have it on paper. Uh, you could have it on a uh, Excel spreadsheet. Hey, that's a little bit better than paper. Uh, you maybe have it on an Excel spreadsheet with a password. So your Excel spreadsheet is password protected. You could be using another service or storing it on a notepad file, wherever it may be. We're gonna be talking about that today. But before we do that, please remember to, as always, to subscribe to my channel, clicking on the notification bell to be kept up to date with all of my video releases. So passwords, you've got heaps of them. How do you remember them all? The worst thing that you can do is have all of your services, right? Let's say all your social media, you've got a Facebook account, you've got Twitter, you've got LinkedIn, and they're all using the same password. Big, big mistake. I would recommend right off the bat, have different passwords for all of your different services. Your banking password, your password for your car registration, your passwords for your insurance, all these other passwords should all be different. Keep them unique, keep them separate. But here's the challenging part, is remembering all of these passwords. You've got hundreds, potentially hundreds. I know I've got hundreds of passwords floating around and it's insane to try to remember them. And further to that, a lot of these uh, services that you use, right? sometimes they will force you to reset your password after 60 days, after 90 days, after a year, whatever it may be. So then you have to go and remember a brand new password. Talk about crazy, right? You've got so many things in life already to remember. Why do you need to remember all these passwords? So here comes the password management software. Essentially a piece of software that helps you manage and store all of your passwords. Sounds absolutely brilliant. Now, of course, you've got Excel spreadsheets. That's great. And um, one that a lot of people use is called KeePass. I would even recommend KeePass. KeePass is great and I've used it in certain places. Um, but the problem with a, something like KeePass, the problem with something like an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document or something like that, is that they're stored locally in your computer. Uh, even if they're stored on a USB hard drive, they're stored somewhere locally. Uh, and sometimes when you actually need that password, you're on the you're on the run somewhere, right? You're in the car, you've just logged into your bank and you're like, ah, oh, what's my password to my banking? How do you get access to that file? You know, it's on your computer, so it's very difficult to do that. What if you have multiple users? What if you have, um, you know, you've got you, your spouse, perhaps some kids or friends that you want to be able to share passwords with or for them to be able to manage all their accounts uh, within one sort of centralized location, password management centralized location. You can't do that very easily. Uh, so um, something that I love to use is a service called LastPass. Awesome service. And if you look it up, it is one of the best, in my opinion, the best uh, cloud-based password management system right? So you essentially add all of your usernames, your passwords, your pin codes, all of that sort of stuff onto their cloud service and it is stored on there. Now you're going to be asking me, what about security? It's so, it's on the cloud. That's a really bad thing. It was, I would say back in the day, there was a few security concerns here and there, but companies have gone a long way since then where now passwords being stored on the cloud is very, very secure especially if you're using a trusted company. And LastPass is a very, very trusted company that has been doing it for a long time. And they've got a whole heap of regulations in place. You can read all their terms and conditions where they essentially are held liable if they've got data breaches and all this other sort of stuff. But further to that, when you're setting up, say for example, a LastPass account, you've got a master password, but you've also got a second level of authentication called MFA, multi-factor authentication. So you've got two different forms of authentication to log in to this cloud-based server. 
And of course, these cloud-based servers they, themselves, they've got backups, they've got all of this sort of stuff. So if they if your data gets lost, they can do restoration. So it's not a problem, right? I use it all the time and I would definitely recommend doing it that way. The other great thing about a service that is on the cloud is that essentially it's accessible from anywhere, all right? You're on the run, as I said, you're in the car, you're overseas, you don't have your computer with you, you've got your smartphone, your smartphone is on the internet. You could access the website, the LastPass website, you log in, the credentials, you throw in the second form of authentication, and there you go, you've got access to all of your passwords right from there. Now, before we go and show you how to do this, um, I do have in my description a direct link into LastPass. Uh, it is, you get a really good deal through LastPass. They're very cheap, they're very reliable, but it also helps me to obviously grow a little bit of my channel by you clicking on that link and directing yourself that way into setting up a LastPass account. So let's now cross over to the computer and we'll show you how to set up one of these accounts. Let's just go through uh, a little bit about um, the different options around LastPass. So the two main types of accounts that you can set up, one being a personal account, one being more aimed at the business. Now up here, we're gonna select pricing right here. And this is, I think, is the best place to actually see clearly um, the different options available to you. So the first one here being single users and families. Uh, you've got a free account, which is just a simple free account for a single user, as it says right here, and it gives you a whole bunch of stuff. And this may be great for most users. Secure password vault, access on all your devices, saves all your passwords and auto fill your passwords and password generators, um, which is really, really easy. Something else that it comes with is uh, what I like to use, which is MFA, uh, multi-factor authentication. Essentially, you've got your passwords all stored on the cloud uh, and having one single password, like a master password to log in and had that, that is the only account that you, the only password that you've got could be a little bit risky. So what I recommend is setting up a second form of authentication so that it's not just the password, the master password that you use, but a second form uh, and essentially makes your account a lot more secure, especially if somebody's trying to access your account, uh, you know, if they're unauthorized, for example. So free version being free, then you move on to premium and families. Uh, premium is still one user, while then families is six users. And you can see clearly right on here, uh, the differences between a free version and a premium version. This one is actually really, really helpful because all of your email addresses which are registered against accounts throughout the internet, sometimes there could be breaches uh, on those accounts, for example. And this one, as it says, it watches, let me just click on that again. It just watches all of your accounts related to your email address for breach activity and alerts you when you need to take action. So let's say Facebook has been hacked um, and your password was on a database and then now somebody's got that database. This will tell you Facebook's had a data breach. You may wanna go in and reset your password on your Facebook account. This one's actually really good where you get some additional storage uh, on top of just storing all of your passwords, but actually one gig of encrypted file storage, which is actually really, really helpful. What I like to do, for example, is I've got all of my um, my credit cards, my driver's license, my passports, my birth certificates. I've got photos of all of these. So I've got digital copies of all of these. And I need to store those somewhere in a secure location. I don't wanna just have a paper copy. Um, you wanna have digital versions of that uh, for you know, various, various reasons. And so this is actually really, really good for me. Business plans, you get a little bit more fancy. First one being MFA, uh, Teams being, it says here, up to Teams of 50. Uh, and then this one is unlimited users. And then Identity is uh, allows you to do single sign-on, multi-factor, password management, and things of that nature as well. All right, so what we're gonna sign up right here is a premium account because we wanna have multi-device password sharing, uh, which I think is very helpful, as well as the one gig of encrypted storage, which you don't get in the free one. But as I said, you can go and get yourself the free one right now, but the premium one for a small cost of $4.50 a month, you get just a lot of extra cool stuff. So we're just gonna say buy now. All right, so here is where you actually go and create yourself your own account. Uh, throw in an email address, your password, confirm it. Uh, if you've already got an account with LastPass, great. You can just go and log in. So just follow these steps, create yourself an account, and we'll go from there. And then of course comes to the point where we now put in our relevant information around our billing information, our credit card details. Uh, here is a summary of what's gonna happen. So this is 450 per month billed annually, which means it's gonna take out the full amount 
And if you're happy with all of that for the premium account, go and confirm your purchase. All right, so that is now done. You'll see that the premium purchase is complete. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, you can go and see the status, the invoice information, and it's around the My Account page. Uh, you can also install LastPass if you so want to, and that's essentially just a uh, like an add-on, like an extension to your browser. Uh, we won't go through that, but it's a nice thing to have if you so choose to. We're just gonna go back onto here, onto LastPass, and we're going to now log in and have a look. Here we are logged in. As you can see, this is our vault, essentially the home page. Nothing to see here, but now we can go and add an item, add some folders, start creating essentially a directory structure for storing all of our passwords. Here's a few that I just created just now. These three new accounts that I've just set up within LastPass. Uh, and literally all I have to do is I click on the little plus down the bottom here. And I now am selecting what item, what sort of item is it? Is it a password? Is it just a secure note? Is it an address? Is it a payment card? Is it a bank account? Uh, so let's just say we're gonna create a new password. We're gonna put the URL into here. So let's say my, the URL for this particular website, it's uh, my Facebook account. The name is, what do you want this uh, actual name on LastPass to be? So this is um, Bobby's Facebook account. Username is Bobby at Gmail. Dot com, which is probably a real person's email address. I'm sorry, Bobby. And then the password. What is the password? So ABC123. You can click on the little I here to actually see it. All right. And this is my primary Facebook account. And save. And you'll see that what this will do is it will just create a new entry right here, Bobby's Facebook account. I can click on this right here. You can see all the information. I can click on this to see what the password is. Right, I can delete it. I can also just right click on it and say copy username, copy password, copy URL. So I don't have to actually go into it to get that password, which is really, really helpful. I can just say copy password, go to my facebook.com, throw in the password and I'm done. Uh, very similar, I've got my credit card in here. Here it is, my credit card information. You can add attachments. For example, you could actually have an image uh, of the actual uh, card itself, which is quite nice. Addresses. Secure notes are really helpful as well. You know, little messages that you need to keep secure. Uh, and there's a few other items as well, such as your driver's license, your passports, and a whole range of other information. So this is a amazing place to store all of this information. On the left, you've got your navigation area here. Uh, so at the moment you'll see that it's all items, so they're all listed here. But then I've got passwords, notes, addresses, payment cards, bank accounts. If I specifically have all of my things, it just has sort of categorized them there for me. Uh, security dashboard is great. Um, how at risk are my passwords and my accounts? Dark web monitoring, you know, how at risk are the accounts that I've set up on particular websites? So if, if an account that I use has been hacked, uh, it'll tell me things like that. Um, sharing center allows you to share with others this information, emergency access in the event that say you're unavailable. Um, what are people that you trust? Um, that can still access all of this information. Uh, account settings, of course, you can see all the account settings around that account. Trusted devices, mobile devices, uh, URLs that you don't want to use. Uh, the one that I'd recommend straight away is to set up multi-factor authentication because you've got all your passwords, your credit card information, driver's license, all stored in one spot. Set yourself up a second form of authentication. Two that I always use are Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, and I have those because I've got, you know, where I work, for example, they have those other services that use these other form of authentications. So it's just really, really easy to just say, okay, well, I'm gonna use Google Authenticator right here because I've already got it. I enable it uh, and then it'll show up once I've registered it and it'll show up within my Google Authenticator app to give me that particular pin code to actually then log in. So if you don't have one of these, uh, just go to your app store on your phone on your iPhone, on your Android, download the Google Authenticator or the Microsoft Authenticator app. Um, you've also got the LastPass Authenticator if you do choose to use that one as well. But I definitely would recommend using multi-factor authentication with your LastPass. So it's a great, great service. Hopefully you were able to set one up and if you haven't yet, you're gonna do it in the future. Uh, remember to click in the description. Uh, I've got that link to the LastPass URL to the website. That also helps me out a little bit to be able to continue to release great content. So really would appreciate that. But as I said, password management used to be a nightmare, but is now so much easier and is easily manageable now with this awesome cloud service. So that's it. Thank you so much for spending the time. I really, really appreciate that you spent the time watching this video. 
And as always, do your thing by liking, commenting, subscribing, clicking on the bell to be kept up to date with my video releases. Thank you again. We'll see you next time.